Methods for joining DNA fragments. Mainly three methods are used to join DNA fragments from different sources. Mainly it will depend that uh, to which restriction enzyme the DNA has been fragmented or digested. जो पहला method है ये बेस करता है uh, on the DNA ligase जो कि isolate किया गया है uh, E. coli से. So this DNA ligase from E. coli it it will mainly target those DNA fragments that uh, have been digested uh, with uh, those restriction enzymes uh, that produce cohesive or sticky ends. So it will mediate the formation of phosphodiester bonds uh, between uh, the DNA fragments that are having the cohesive end. Another method, it is also depends on DNA ligase, but the source is different. This DNA ligase, it is encoded by phage T4 that can infect the E. coli. Now, this T T4 DNA ligase, it will uh, join or ligate the DNA fragments that are having the blunt ends. For instance, if the target DNA it is digested with T3 restriction enzyme, the DNA fragments that will be produced having the blunt ends. So the ligation of blunt ends it is mediated by uh, T4 DNA ligase. The third method it depends upon the ability of terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase and commonly it is also called as terminal transferase. This enzyme it introduces homopolymer tails at three prime ends of the DNA fragment. Homopolymer tailing means that the tails contain a single type of residues at three prime ends. For example, either adenine, guanine, cytosine or thymine. How it is possible? Uh, we are going to discuss after some time. But now we are going to focus on DNA ligase. As I mentioned that DNA ligase, it mediate the formation of phosphodiester bond between uh, two adjacent nucleotides. So it introduces bond between 5 prime phosphate at, and 3 prime hydroxyl group because when two DNA molecules having the sticky end they will join because of complementary base pairing so gaps remains that may be one or two nucleotide base pairs apart so this gap will be bridged and bond will be formed by DNA ligase so in both cases either it is E. coli DNA ligase are DNA ligase from T4 phages. So both will catalyze the formation of phosphodiester bond. But during their activity, their uh, cofactor requirements may be different. For example, T4 DNA ligase, uh, it requires ATP. Jabke, jo bacterium DNA ligase hai, Iske, iska jo cofactor hai, wo NAD plus hai. NAD plus means that uh, uh, nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. So both will split or hydrolyze after interacting with the DNA ligase and uh, AMP and enzyme complex will be formed. And this AMP enzyme complex will be used to form phosphodiester bonds. So this diagram it indicates that how cohesive or sticky ends they can anneal and finally ligate. So here this DNA it is basically digested with EcoR1 so that sticky ends they are having single stranded ends that are TTAA or AATT. So they can anneal here and the gap that is produced here it is mainly breached by the activity of DNA ligase. So there is another diagram 
that indicating the action of T4 DNA ligase and the DNA ligase isolated from E. coli. So their cofactor requirements are different like ATP for T4 DNA ligase and NAD plus for DNA ligase from E. coli. So both will hydrolyze and enzyme AMP complex will be formed here. So this is the target site 5 prime phosphate and 3 prime OH group that needs to be bridge or ligate so that phosphodiester bond will be formed. So enzyme will bind here and finally it will introduce phosphodiester bond within the DNA molecule.